God wants you to grow. God wants you to expand. Yes. You know, anything that's not growing, well, it's starting to die. And that's our powerful message for you today. Be so blessed. Hi, my name is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV. Enjoy the power and the presence of God in your life today. Three creative ways to live in the present moment. With all the busyness in our world, we sometimes take for granted what's happening right at the moment. That means thinking about the past or future rather than focusing on your current action. Here are three creative and specific strategies you can employ to enter the present moment quickly and experience the numerous benefits that go along with it. First, look for opportunities. Practice this now. Look around. There are possibilities everywhere, visible and invisible. Start with visible cues and they may lead to more ideas. There's so much you can do right now, but you have to intentionally look for it. Second, have the scavenger mindset. When you have the scavenger mindset, you don't ever quit until the day is over because time is the ultimate resource. There's always something left to salvage if you've got time. And any wasted time that you can turn into meaningful time is a free bonus to your life. Third, pause and pray. Taking a breather and talking to God is so powerful because it increases mindfulness, which makes us happier and healthier. Matthew 6.34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. We are still talking about stages. Everybody say stages. Finding God where you are. And I don't know if you were here last Sunday, but we opened this series with a bang by talking about the first stage of life. From birth to 20 years old. Okay? And we said that if you are part of the first stage of life, your ultimate purpose in life is to explore. Say explore. Explore. It's, it's, it's a time in your life where you can discover your identity or who you are as a person. You can also use that time to discover your calling or where you're going in life. And you can also use that time to discover your, your values, why you're choosing to go to these places, okay? But today, we're going to shift gears a little bit, all right? We're going to talk about the second stage of life. People who are in their 20s all the way to the 40s, would you raise your hand? Come on. You are my audience for today, all right? So, listen to this. The ultimate purpose, if you are in the second stage of life, is this. To expand. Say expand. It's to expand what you already have, all right? So work for expansion. Act for expansion, live for expansion, pray for expansion. One of the most powerful prayers you can pray in this season of your life is the prayer of Jabez, First Chronicles. Can we put it up on screen? Everybody, read it with me. Ready, set, go. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border. That's a beautiful prayer to have in this stage of your life. How many of you want to enlarge your borders? That's what we're going to talk about, all right? Are you ready for God's Word? God's going to drop a bomb on some of you here today, and I'm so excited to preach this to you. Let's come in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stretch out your hands, both hands in the air, and say this with me. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. Shout it out! And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
you are absolutely going to love our big message for today. You know, I said that I'm going to speak to the 20 to 40 year olds. But you know what? This message is so good that it can apply to any stage, any age in life. Are you ready for this? Okay, I'm going to need your help. I need you to announce this to as many people as you can. I want you to preach this to them with passion and with power. Tell that person, God fights your battles. God fights your battles. That's right. How many of you honestly believe that God wants you to expand? Raise your hand. This is for all of us here. Whether you're in the first stage, second stage, third stage, God wants you to expand. Say expand. I'll say it again. If you're in the second stage of life, your purpose is to expand what you already have. But let me give you a warning. When you expand, expect some opposition. Expect some aggression. Expect some things to come against you. You know this. We've been studying the life of David. Last Sunday, we saw David from the perspective of a young boy, a young shepherd boy. Now we're going to switch our glasses and look at David from the perspective of a fighter. Okay? As a perspective of a champion. And if you remember, last Sunday also, I shared with you the different roles I've played here at the feast. You remember that? From being a, a chorus member to becoming a runner, from a runner to becoming an administrator, administrator to a worship leader, worship leader to a cluster head, cluster head to a feast builder. I've worn a lot of hats in this feast, in, serving the Lord. But even though the, my title has changed over the years, my calling always remains the same. Very important for you to note this, that in the different stages of your life, the characters you play may change, but your calling should always remain the same. It should always be consistently the same. Okay? Your calling should never change. Now, going back to David while studying him, we've seen David transition now from becoming a kid to becoming a commander, from leading sheep to leading soldiers. He's no longer the teenager that we once knew. And the Bible says this. Can you help me read this? 1 Samuel verse 18, uh, chapter 18, everybody. David led his men in battle and was successful in all he did because the Lord was with him. Did you notice anything? Aside from what was italicized right there. David led. That's what the Bible says. Somehow you would think that the Bible would say David fought with his men or David fought alongside his men. Because the last time we saw David, David was a fighter. He was fighting with Goliath. I know it's just one word, but let me show you how this one word changes the entire picture. When David defeated Goliath, he was a fighter. He was a warrior. He wasn't a leader. He fought, but he didn't lead. In the first stage of his life, he was a master when it came to one-on-one -on -one combat. He fought the lion. He fought the bear. He fought the giant. But in the second stage of his life, David knew that if he was going to expand, say expand, if he was going to expand, he needed to do something that he never did. He needed to become a leader and not just a fighter. Are you getting what I'm saying? He knew he needed to step out of an old character so that he could step into a new capacity. And that's what happens whenever you expand. As your character changes, your capacity also increases. In your own life today, the important thing is that you need to recognize the character that your current stage is calling you to be. What stage are you in? What character are you supposed to be in in that stage? That's what David did, all right? If you think about it, David, when he defeated Goliath, he could have stopped right there. He could have retired. He could have kicked back, you know, in the couch. He could have just said, okay, I'm done with this. But you know what he did? He still kept on fighting. He still kept on using that slingshot. He didn't put it up in a museum. That's why David wasn't a one-hit wonder. Say one-hit wonder. For you to keep expanding, that's what you need to do. You need to keep fighting bigger battles. Can you touch your neighbor and say, keep fighting bigger battles? That's right. To keep expanding, you got to keep fighting bigger battles. God doesn't call you to be a museum curator, okay? God calls you to be a kingdom builder. Can I get an amen? 
let me close with the last part of the scripture this part I love the most God spoke to me volumes this week about this the Bible says that the reason why David was so successful in all that he did was because the Lord was with him everybody say the Lord was with him encourage the person beside you and say the Lord is with you David saw that the Lord was with him in Acts chapter 2 verse 25 in the previous series we talked about the book of Acts right while Peter was preaching during the day of Pentecost he said that David said this about his God David says I saw that the Lord was always before me because he is at my right hand I will not be shaken David had an advantage say advantage David had an advantage that nobody else did you want to know what that advantage was ask me what a little bit louder what he saw he saw everybody say he saw he saw when the whole army let me explain when the whole army of Israel saw Goliath you know what they saw they saw an impossible obstacle but not David when David saw Goliath he didn't see an impossible obstacle he saw an incredible opportunity while everybody else saw Goliath and said he's too big to kill David saw Goliath and said he's too big to miss David had the courage and the confidence to fight Goliath why because he had an advantage over the enemy he saw that he wasn't fighting the battle all by himself God was before him God was before him but he needed to see here's the last part here's the last part the other interesting part was when David said because he is at my right hand I will not be shaken because he was at my right hand in the Bible the right hand always signifies power and strength yes it's the hand that bestows the blessing it's the hand that gives the blessing so between the right hand and the left hand the right hand is greater it's the hand that goes up it's the hand that's often raised up so when David said because he is at my right hand he was simply saying maybe all I gotta do is just lift up my right hand and this becomes my upper hand I don't know about you but I want you to know right now that you too have the upper hand every time you lift your right hand in the presence of Jesus go ahead lift your right hand this is your upper hand this is your heavenly advantage over the enemy and now you begin to see that God is with you you begin to see that God is for you you begin to see that God fights for you so now you can take a stand and make a declaration that you can expand because you've got the upper hand praise God come on praise God praise God praise God come on everybody say I've got the upper hand come on say it I've got the upper hand and that's why I can expand you've got the advantage God gives you the advantage we're in our series called stages and in stage two that's the time where men men are usually that's their that's the time where they become first time fathers from the age of 20 to the age of 40 and the theme the goal of stage two is expansion it's growth now you might be how many I, I know already asked this before but can we do it again all those from 20 to 40 raise your hand 20 to 40 okay that's the time where you're precisely you're supposed to grow and expand now in those people who did not raise your hands it doesn't mean that you won't grow we should always grow in any stage of our life do I hear a loud amen but it's precisely in stage two that you need to do that and there are three things that are very very important that you need to do how many three and they all begin with the letter a to remind you a little bit easier to, to remember here's number one everybody say I'm ready automate your upgrade say that with me what does that mean if you have a phone all the apps in your phone are auto upgrade yes or no the software company doesn't ask your permission the moment it comes out with a new version what does it do sends it to you yes or no 
That's what it does. Same thing. I'm going to ask you this question. Is your spirit on auto-upgrade? Is your attitude on auto-upgrade? Is your mind on auto-upgrade? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Are you constantly downloading from God, you know, what He wants you to learn? Your spirit, your attitude, your disposition, your character. Can I tell you a story? If you do not upgrade, you're going to become a dinosaur. Tell somebody beside you, don't be a dinosaur. There was a guy, a hundred plus years ago, his name was George Eastman. He was the founder of Kodak. Are you familiar with that company? People my age, you know that company very, very well. Today, those are the younger guys, you don't know it so much. Let me tell you why. George Eastman, some of you are smiling. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know, Kodak, of course. Paki Kodak nga. age ko yan. Younger people, what's that? You know, George East Eastman, he was the founder of Kodak, and he was on a trip, and he wanted to take pictures. Here was the problem. Ask him, what's the problem? During his time, cameras were this big, as big as a microwave oven. And then he had to bring bottles of chemicals. Would you believe that? To take pictures. To take pictures, you need bottles of chemicals. And then there will be smoke. When you, when you take pictures. Anyway, you know, he said, is there an easier way? And he was an inventor. He goes to the laboratory. He invents a camera smaller that can put the photo in film. For the first time in the world, he invented it. And he was so happy that it worked. He showed it to all the professional pro photographers. And he told them, what do you think of my invention? And they said, wow, it's pretty cool putting it on film. But you know what, George? It won't work. Why? And then the professional said, the quality is bad. It's too grainy. It won't work for us. Give it up. Give up the idea. But you know what George said? It's not for you. It's for the Joe and the Jane, for the ordinary person who wants to take photos on trips. People like me. And so he brought it in the market. It became a humongous hit. And it took over the world by storm. So much so, in 100 years later, almost, in 1976, 85% of all the films in the world came from Kodak. That's how crazy that company is. It was not just a part of an industry. It was almost like the entire industry. It was an 800-pound gorilla in that industry. And then, it was so good. Kodak was so good. In 1975, one of the engineers of Kodak invented digital photography. What you're using in your phone now, it started in Kodak. The engineer, excited, brings it to the executives, showed the invention. The executive said, quality is not very good. Besides, if we bring it out in the market, our film business will go down and it will be eaten up. We're earning billions from the film industry, from our, from our film products. What happened? They buried the digital photography technology. Did you, are you listening to me? What, what am I saying? They did not upgrade. And that's what happened. A few years later, 2012, Kodak declared bankruptcy. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That's why young people don't, don't hear that name as much as we do older people because they did not upgrade they became a dinosaur and i'm going to ask i'm going to challenge you will you upgrade in every area of your life jesus talked about it where i'm going to share it with you in matthew chapter 25 it says here you know jesus told the story of a wealthy man called three of his servants he was going going on a trip and he gave five gold bags of gold to the first servant two bags of gold to the second servant, and then one bag of gold to the, th to the third servant. And, and what, did, what happened? It says here in, in verse 16, the man who had received five bags of gold went out at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. Let's read together. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. He didn't upgrade. The big question I want to ask you is this, in this parable, 
what does the gold represent? Can you ask that person beside you, what does the gold represent? Now, this is where it becomes confusing. Ask me why. The parable was called, in older versions, the parable of the talents, referring to the currency of the Greek during that time. But, you know, we, we read the Bible, parable of the talents, ah, I can sing, I can draw, I can cook. No, talents refer to the currency. But for us, oh, Jesus wants me to multiply Grow, expand my talents, my talent to sing. My ta you got what I'm saying? So there is a little bit of confusion there. It's okay. You can think of it, your gold, as talents, but it's much more. Everybody say, it's much more. What do you think that the gold represents? You want to know? You want to know? Can you ask me? Galing. There was a Bible scholar, an Old Testament expert. He believes this, that gold being very heavy connects to a, a, one of the themes of the Old Testament, the heaviness of God. The heaviness of God. The Hebrew word is kabod. And he believes this. And, and I was reading and I said, of course, I think this is true. That he believes this, that the gold represented, everybody what? The best expression of God's heaviness, which is the mercy of God. You are supposed to expand. You are supposed to grow what? Your capacity. Not just to cook. Not just to sing. Not just to play the guitar. Not just to do business and to do math. Not just skills. You are supposed to expand. Grow. What? Ask me what? Your most important capacity. Your capacity to love the way God loves to show mercy the way God shows mercy. This is what it means to expand. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? This is what you need to multiply. You need to expand not only your craft, you need to expand your character. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. So the first thing you've got to do is to automate your upgrade. Here's number two. You need to also acclimate to crisis. Can you use, shout that out with me please? Acclimate to crisis. Why? Friends, let's, let's, you know, one, let me share you a story. I, I was a young guy, first time in Canada, supposed to preach there, you know, and first time, like, like I was saying, wow, first time to this country. And it was not winter anymore. It was spring. I was freezing. It's like, my Canadian friends were saying, no, it's, it's already warm. What? This is warm? You're nuts. And so I wore thermals, um, thermal down, thermal up. I, I wore a sweater. I wore another sweater. And then I wore another sweater. And then a jacket. And then a scarf. And then earmuffs. And then a bonnet. And I walked in the street. You know, it's crazy. I, I, you look at me in Tabani Bo. You know, I was walking around in the street. Uh, really, really, really freezing for me. Why? Ask me why. Because in the Philippines, there are only three seasons, right? Hot, hotter, and hottest. <laughs> so when you go to Canada, I mean, it's crazy. And then as I was walking with my Canadian friend on the street, you know, balut na balut talaga ako, it's just freezing, you know? And my friend was laughing at me. Lo and behold, to the shock of my life, I saw a girl washing her car, she was wearing a red bikini. I'm not kidding. It's like, won't she get pneumonia? <laughs> but why was she wearing that? Ask me why. She was acclimatized. Do I hear a loud amen? Acclimatized, ibig sabihin sa Tagalog, eh, she grew up with that. Sanay na siya dyan eh. In the same way, do you want to grow? Do you want to expand? Are you sure? Yes. Then you've got to acclimate yourself to crisis. You're going to have crisis again and again and again. David, when he fought Goliath, you think that was the last battle of his life? No. He went through another battle and another battle and another battle and another battle. Tell somebody beside you. Tell somebody beside you. All success comes from struggle. Say that. 
In fact, if you read about David, when he fought with Goliath, at tinalo niya si Goliath, guess what? Ask me what? He had another enemy. Ask me who? His boss, King Saul. King Saul wanted him dead. You know, I, can, can I read that for you? By the way, which goes to show that your most difficult battles are with the people closest to you. You know, what do you think? Is that true? Ay, nako. May hugot, eh, no? 1 Samuel 18. In their celebration, the women sang, Saul has killed thousands, but David tens of thousands. Saul did not like this, and he became very angry. And so he was jealous and suspicious of David from that day on. He, he was insecure. He was jealous. He was envious. He wanted to kill David. He really wanted to kill David. How many of you have a boss that's difficult? Raise your hand. Wala naman siya dito. If you have a boss that's difficult, is he trying to kill you? No, no, no. David had a harder time. In, in fact, I, I want you to hold someone's hand if you can. Hold it, even if it's a bit wet now. And, and then tell that person, get used to trouble. If you want to grow, there's no other way. I mean, you want to grow, right? In your spiritual life, in your family life, in your marriage, in your health, in your career. You want to keep on growing, yes or no? There's no other way. You've got to get used to trouble. And, and I believe this. You know, when I look at my life, I, I lead a number of ministries for 40 years. For 40 years leading Light of Jesus, the feasts. And then after that, we, we, we built up Shepherd's Voice, our Kerygma magazine. And then after that, the radio program and then the TV show. And then Anawim, our ministry for the poor. And then on and on and on. I, I, I'm leading so many ministries. L believe you me, in a particular season of my life, I was firefighting every single day. There's always a problem here, another problem there, and another problem there. I would get urgent phone calls and urgent emails. Bo, may problema dito. Ah, oh, sige. Oh, anong gagawin natin? And, and then oh, another phone call, and then another email, and then just every single day. This was my life. I was eating problems for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you know what? If, if I did not trust God, I would have gone insane. You, you believe you me. You, I, I, want you, I want you to believe in that. Everybody say, let's trust God. Tell somebody beside you, trust God so that you won't go insane. My biggest growth spurts came from solving problems. Do you have a problem? Then it is an invitation for you to grow by leaps and bounds. Here's number three. What's number one? Review. You've got to automate your upgrade. What's number two? You've got to acclimate to crisis. And number three, you've got to allocate your resources. Everybody say that with me. Because if you expand, you're going to experience a pushback. You're going to experience resistance. You're going to have obstacles. You're going to have enemies. And there will be battles around you. David had so many battles around him. And the battle in his life, can I share this with you? This is, this is in 1 Samuel chapter 24. So King Saul wanted him dead. And he got 3,000 able young men. Let's read. He got 3,000 able young men from all of Israel. Set out to look for David. A cave was there. Everybody say, a cave was there. And Saul went in to relieve himself. Say that with me. And Saul went in to relieve himself. You know what relieve is in biblical language? You don't know? He did a number two. Everybody say, ah. You'd think that the king would bring a portable potty, right? No, he didn't. He goes to the cave and relieves himself. Yeah, you can say that tomorrow morning to your wife. Sweetheart, I'm going to relieve myself and go to the bathroom. And this is what happened. So, so he's relieving himself. And uh, David and his men were far back in the cave. We're really deep inside the cave. The men said, this is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Woohoo! You know, the soldiers of David were saying, Eto na, binigay na ni Lord. 
This is the guy that wants to kill you. He's now doing a number two. You can kill him. Because the Lord said, and then they quoted the Bible. Lesson. Ask me what lesson? Not anyone who opens his mouth and gives you a scripture verse is speaking in behalf of God. You've got to understand that. These soldiers of David, they wanted Saul dead. They wanted to kill him. And they used the Bible verse. David did not follow them. This is what David did. Ask me what? David crept unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Wow. Well, you know, that was pretty serious number two. He did not know that David went behind him to cut a part of his robe. He was so focused. You're right? Mm, he was so focused. David, you see, it's, it's funny, right? Who said the Bible is boring? And Saul left the cave and went his way. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My Lord, my King. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. The very man who wanted to kill him, he bowed down to him. And he said, what did he say? See my father. He called him father. See my father. Look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe but did not kill you. Why did, why did David cut a, a little part of his robe? To tell Saul, I could have killed you. I did not. I did not. And then what did he say? Beautiful words. I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. And then let's read together. Can everybody read this together? Can you all stand? Read, read what David said to Saul. One, two, three, go. May the Lord judge between you and me. And may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me. But my hand will not touch you. You're going to have battles in your life. Many, 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 many battles in your life. Many enemies who don't like you. Problems that will go against you. But I've got a word for you. Ask me what? 90% of those battles you should not fight. 90% of the battles in your life you should not fight. They're God's battles. They're God's battles. You're like David. Saul hated him. Saul was insecure. He wanted him dead. What did David do? Protect himself from abuse. You need to do that. Tell somebody beside you, protect yourself from abuse. But, but, don't take vengeance. Don't. This is God's battle. In Tagalog, wag mong sayangin yung pagod at, at, at oras mo. No, don't waste your time and energy on a battle that's not yours. I get bashed a lot. I've got bashers. I've got favorite bashers. In social media, every day, they call me all sorts of names. I, I get promoted, you know, I'm first false teacher, and then after that, antichrist, and then after that, the demon himself, you know, every so often. Every day I get bashed. Do I answer them? No, I don't even read them. I will, they're not worthy of my time, my energy, and my attention. Why? That battle is the Lord's. That battle is the Lord's. What are my battles? Ask me. What are your battles, Brother Bo? My battle? How to love my wife? How to love my two boys? How to love my friends? How to love my flock? All of you? That's my battle. Not answering bashers. And, no. This is, this is where my energy goes. Listen to me. Who are my enemies? Complete sentence. Who are your enemies, Brother Bo? My pride, my selfishness, my lust, my greed. Do you understand me? Why will I give time to other battles? These battles are not mine. They're the Lord's. You too. You have to make this decision. Many of the battles in your life, 
you need to avoid. If a battle is not yours, it's the Lord's, avoid them. Here's what God will do. God's going to be there. He's going to fight the battle for you. Amen? He's going to do that. Saul, King Saul, David said, I will not touch you. But you know, one day, later on, years later, or months later, King Saul, he was fighting the Philistines. He was about to be captured. When he was about to be captured, instead of being captured, King Saul killed himself, threw himself into his own sword. David did not have to fight Saul. Am I making sense to you? And, and if it's a battle that you need to fight, if it's a battle that you need to fight, God will fight the battle beside you. He will be there with you. Let's pray together, everybody. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, lift up your hands. Just, just say, Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to tell you that I follow you and I trust you. The battles in my life, I surrender all to you. Give me discernment. Give me wisdom to know whether to fight or whether to avoid. In Jesus' name. Ako po si Jolly Arquero. Na-diagnose po ako ng breast cancer stage 2 noong August 2015. This foundation thrives on volunteerism. We gather everybody. We try to collect funds. We try to see what we can do for that gathering. Volunteer ako since uh, September 2015 when JCCFC started. We have uh, pastoral care. Sometimes we have mass. Sometimes we have feast video. Ang mga natutunan ko po na mga aral, mula nung natulungan po ako na umpisa ng GCCF Foundation sa pag-attend ko every meeting, marami po sir. Every time na nandito po ako, nakikita ko po yung mga kapwa ko na masigla. So parang ako'y nabibigyan din po ng saya. Some of the challenges that we have are you know, raising funds. Because unlike other mercy ministries, na donors can give clothes, food, not necessarily money. Since we extend financial assistance to uh, cancer patients, the foundation is heavily dependent on donors. To the potentially new donors, be with us. Because uh, there's no other better way than to at the least of our brethren. Sa mga mabubuting loob dyan at malaking puso na tumutulong sa GCCF Foundation, maraming salamat at malaking blessing po sa amin na mga may sakit at may karamdaman. At naway, huwag kayong magsawang tumulong sa amin dahil marami po kayong nabibigyan ng chance na mabuhay muli Thank you, hope begins with you. Thank you, and hope begins with you. Thank you, hope begins with you. You are a blessing to me. You are a blessing to this ministry just by watching and just by praying for us and by telling the world, hey, watch. Kerygma TV, it will bless your life. And for those of you who, are, who have decided to be our partners, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. In fact, I'm asking you now, if you have not yet made that decision and, and, and you know, you're hearing God telling you, support Kerygma TV, please say yes to God. And yes, just contact us. And, 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 and tell us, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to be a partner. I'm, I'm willing to support your program so that more people will hear God's word and receive God's love. And as our way of saying thank you 
for any amount whatsoever that you will give this program, we will send back to you a copy of this particular talk that you're hearing. And for a donation of 2,000 pesos or more to this ministry, you shall receive the entire series of stage stages. You know, this, this whole thing just to bless you. It will arrive in your home and you, you, you will be so blessed. Not only that, you will receive my best-selling book, Enjoy Your Age. And this book has blessed so many people already. And people come up to me and they say, you know, Bo, fantastic, fantastic book. It spoke to me. It spoke to my heart. I want to give this book to you as my way of saying thank you for being right here, our partner, our support partner. We can't do this without you. So thank you. Thank you. Once again, just contact us right now. And we'd, we'd love to send this material over to you. God bless you. God reward you for your kindness and generosity. Last year, I got married with my first boyfriend. And we had high hopes for the future. Super excited kami. And then, what's more, um, parang three weeks into our marriage or almost a month into our marriage, we found out that we were pregnant. We were looking forward to May 2019. Kasi para makasama na namin siya. We decided to call her Pia kasi we are both devotees of Padre Pio and we believe that it's through his intercession that we were granted a child. Ang ironic lang kasi on St. Pio's Day, September 23, I had the spotting. So which made us go to the doctor earlier than expected. Yung dapat na regular checkup namin. So napaaga siya. So Nung nagpunta kami doon, nalaman namin na wala na heartbeat si Pia. It was both painful physically and emotionally. Kasi masakit siya talaga. As in yung normal na pinagdadaanan ng mothers who are in labor. Yun yung pagdadaanan ng isang nagbe-miscarriage until malabas yung sack. And emotionally because she's our first baby. And during those months... Following the miscarriage, parang iyak lang ako ng iyak. Even when I pray, even when we worship God, parang ang bigat. Tapos hindi namin naiintindihan kung bakit, pero we decided to continue praying and to just ask for guidance from Him. Yung nangyari, it really brought me to a deeper and closer relationship with God. Parang sa akin, ang naging one big message niya is, God is the strength that I never thought I had walang naghanda sa akin sa sakit na mawala ng anak. Pero nagulat ako kasi wala rin naghanda sa akin sa ganun kalaking grasya. Parang I was surprised with the overwhelming grace that carried us through. And hindi ko yun ina-expect na akala ko nakita ko na lahat ng surprises ni Lord, nakita ko na lahat ng pagmamahal niya, pero may ibibigay pa pala siya na grabe-grabing pagmamahal. I encourage you to trust the purpose. Because we always hear people say na trust the process. Pero yung process kasi madalas masakit. And how will you trust something na masakit? How will you trust something na confusing? And in my experience, I've learned na hindi ko laging maintindihan yung proseso at hindi ako laging mag sa proseso. But I will always agree na may purpose si God for that. That everything, everything will work out for good. The process may be bad, but the purpose is good. So just trust the purpose because God knows what He's doing and He's good at being God. Hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief Come on, sing it out I raise a hallelujah
I want to invite you to renew your baptismal vows. I don't know if this is the first time you might be doing this or you've been doing this week after week, but we believe here that following Jesus is a daily decision. It's something you got to do every single day, like loving the people around you. And so if you're ready, can I invite you to put your, heart, your hand over your chest. Everybody say, Dear Lord. Come on, say, Dear Lord, I choose to follow you. I choose to turn away from my sin. I choose to obey you. And I invite you right now to be part of my life. Pray with me right now. I know that wherever you are in your home, believe that though we are separated by many miles, the presence of God is bringing us together in His throne room. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we are here and we come to you humble, knowing that you love us. And so I pray right now that this love we experience. And Father, I pray for every person watching and praying with me that your provision be theirs, that your healing be theirs, that your miracle be theirs. Thank you, Father, that you are our healer, and we thank you that you are our miracle worker. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life.